Hey guys, so for this video, I wanna do more of a tutorial. I'm gonna walk you through this painting. This is a gray owl that I did on watercolor board in watercolor gouache and colored pencil. I'm gonna walk you through my process and kind of talk you through the steps that I take to create a final painting like this. So I'm going to start with a solid, accurate drawing in graphite, and then I'm going to go over those lines with a very inky mix of sepia watercolor. And in places where I want it to be a little warmer, I might add a little bit of raw umber, but for this particular tree, I'm just going to use that sepia. It's almost black, very, very dark, and I'm going to not only prevent my pencil lines from disappearing as I work, but I'm blocking in my darkest darks. And what that will do is all of that will show through, this texture layer will show through as I do washes over the top or I airbrush over the top in the case of this painting. And it will give me a roadmap for all of those little details that I wanna add in the end. So working in some washes of burnt sienna here, just a few little places that are warmer that I see in my reference photo. And now I'm gonna come through for the majority of the bark and I'm gonna work with a mix of sepia, raw umber, and ultramarine blue. And I'm gonna alternate a little bit warmer, a little bit cooler based on what I see in my reference photo. This is a watery mix, so more like a wash. And I'm not gonna be careful about my brush strokes. The scrubbier and messier, the better. Because again, this is a texture layer that will show through in the end, and it will really help us achieve a very realistic look to this bark. I'm watching my reference photo to see where these shadows are going in. And now I'm gonna repeat this process with just that inky, almost black sepia, thick watercolor on the owl. I'm just gonna define the basic shapes of the owl. I'm not really too worried about getting all of those details in. And I've thinned out the paint in places. It's not always gonna be super dark because this owl has a lot of light grays and whites. So again, as I said, that dark sepia will show through and I don't wanna have contour lines that I have to fight with the gouache in my final stage of the painting. So now I'm lightly blocking in that tree in the midground. It's a bit warmer, so lots of raw umber in that mix. Pretty messy with my brush strokes, so that again will help with the texture of that particular tree. And now I'm to what I consider my second stage. I'm going to work in airbrush for this particular painting. And I am no expert with an airbrush, as I'm sure you'll be able to tell, but you don't need to be. I'm just going to block in the colors, create a very blurry background, which will help create the illusion of distance. And I'm trying to make some indications of tree branches and forms in the background so it's not just just the colors just i really want some shapes to get a believable sort of foresty atmosphere in the background and those first few layers i'm erasing out where my highlights are just working all over the background i've masked out this owl with a little bit of stencil paper and some masking tape just to preserve those whites because again it's going to be a light colored owl and it's quite difficult if you go too dark to lighten back up again, even with gouache, even though it's quite opaque. So you wanna preserve your whites wherever you're really gonna need a brightness or a vibrance. A bit darker, I've added a little bit of ivory black to sepia, sap green, and cerulean blue in these mixes. And I'm just varying the colors to replicate what I'm seeing in my reference photo. And now I'm gonna co come in with the colored pencil. This 
I would consider this kind of optional. If you are wonderful with an airbrush and you don't struggle with it like I do, you could probably create all of these shapes with your airbrush and just layering watercolor and gouache for the sections that you want more opaque. But for me, this was a handy trick to create a bit of, of texture and a bit of more definition. And then if I go a little too defined in sections, I can airbrush back over them, push them back, kind of mask them out a little bit, and it really creates a very believable atmosphere. i am using all kinds of different colors, lots of blues, lots of browns, a um, little bit of white, tiny bit of black here and there, and the colored pencils that I'm using are Prismacolor and Caran d'Ache Luminance and some Caran d'Ache Pablos, which I love, but I don't have too many of those now, just some of the browns. Airbrushing back over this, pushing it back, fading it out a little bit. And you can see I'm blending with a little bit of solvent. I'm using odorless paint thinner there. And it's really wonderful. It doesn't pull the gouache up. If you were to come over your airbrushed gouache layers with a very wet brush with water, you risk pulling up the layers underneath and kind of creating a hole in your painting. But the solvent used very sparingly does not pose that risk and it really blends beautifully over the top. getting those vibrant greens in. It was looking a little bit drab, and in my reference photo, I could see just these little sections of bright pops of green, and I created those using gouache because it's much more opaque, and it will show up over top of that watercolor. I use all Winsor & Newton gouache colors, and mostly Winsor & Newton watercolor as well, artist quality. adding a bit more branches. And you can see how grainy that, that looks until I go over it with that solvent. And another technique, another tip that you'll see later on, if you have a very grainy pencil stroke and you take a wash of watercolor and just blend over it, it really helps to mask that quite effectively. I'm just going back and forth, lights and darks, until I get this background the way that I want it. This tree branch starts kind of in the mid-ground and then pulls slightly forward. So there are sections that I wanted to make blurrier and sections that I wanted to make more in focus. Adding a bit of definition to this tree bark, which was my absolute favorite part of this painting. It was so much fun. So much texture. I love getting in there and just creating all of those little scrubby, rough pieces. Um, lots of different shadows and highlights and shapes. And I'm doing this, you know, you look at this and it looks like a brown tree trunk. But there are so many greens and blues and yellows and pinks in this. And the same with this tree in the mid-ground. And this has a different texture. It's a much more papery bark. So you're not going to see all of those very strongly defined little sections. And my camera isn't really picking up how vibrant those colors show. Now on this tree, I'm gonna blend out my marks that I make with the colored pencil. And I, I've actually used quite a bit of pink in this tree. It, it gives an overall tan appearance, but it, the colors that I used, the, the color pencils, I used lots of different pinks and peaches. Okay, so airbrushing in some shadows on both trees. And now I'm really gonna get tucked into creating the texture of this tree trunk, which again, so much fun. It was just a blast to paint. And those areas that are much warmer, I'm using warmer colors, more yellows, more pinks, some tans, and then the cooler sections that are in shadow or on the sides of the tree, there's a lot more green, a lot more blue, and some purples in there as well. 
and on this tree I'm not going to blend out those pencil strokes I'm not worried about it they just add to the roughness and the dimension of the bark Now you can see I'm defining some of these shadows. One thing that I would caution against would be tracing around all of those very darkly. You'll get contour lines and you'll really destroy the realism. So I'm really just adding that definition in the shadowy parts, in the darkest, darkest parts, just to give it that, that pop. And now I'm finally moving on to the owl. So I'm gonna start quite timidly with this owl. It was a little bit intimidating, I have to admit. There are so many markings and I really wanted to present it in a realistic way. So I'm starting with light washes of watercolor in, uh, this is mostly ultramarine blue with a little bit of sepia. And in some places, even though my camera's not really picking it up, I used ultramarine blue washes quite um, just straight I didn't really tone them down and then those sections would be um, the underbelly and the main parts of the body where I'm seeing cool shadows. And I'm using my brush strokes to just start to indicate where those feathers are, the direction that they're going and where some of those little markings are. Again, paying attention to my reference, trying to see where my, the warmer washes should go, where the cooler washes should go, in order to help create the dimension, to make it really look like it's three-dimensional. A few more little indications of the, the feathers. And here we're gonna start start getting into the markings and I switched to pencil for this. I just found it easier to get them in in that way. Um, they're quite gray on the top of the head because that's where the light is hitting and then they become more brown and darker as you come down the side. And I tried to keep in mind that all of those lines you know, if you just kind of glance at it, it looks like it's just got circles of lines going around the face, but I've, I've tried to be very careful to make sure that those lines are broken because each of them are made by little feathers, little lines on individual feathers. So it's a broken line, and I'm trying to pay close attention to which direction they're going so that it really informs the form of the face underneath. adding some greens and some blues because the feathers would be reflecting those background colors. A little bit of highlights with some white gouache that I have tinted with sap green and cerulean blue. It looks very turquoise straight on the brush, but once it's on the owl, it's, it's much more gray. More definition, more sepia. And this is, I'm taking that sepia over the grainy pencil, and not only does it help to darken and define it, but it will get rid of that graininess, make it much more painterly. Just slowly working in those markings, more definition to the tail feathers. And getting all of those shadows in correctly is going to make a big difference in how realistic this looks. Adding more of those markings on the back of the head. There I'm using that Burnt Umber Caran d'Ache colored pencil. And that works really well for really all of the markings on the majority of the owl. Getting in the markings on the belly. And you'll see, I'll leave some spaces 
kind of empty. I'm not gonna do much definition with the pencil there because when I come through with the gouache, and it will be a lighter color than the watercolor painting underneath, and that will really create some soft, fluffy feathers near the body and under the wing. It's almost like fur. Finally getting in those markings on the back and on the wing. Again, that's that raw umber. And we're getting really, really close to the final stage here. Going over with watercolor. Kind of masking over the graininess, adding in the shadows. some little indications of feet. And now this is the final stage of the painting. This is the gouache stage. For me, this is where the magic happens. I'm just gonna go through, add some highlights. This is white gouache that I have tinted with the, <clears throat> excuse me, ultramarine and some sap green. They look white going on, but I've really only used bright white in a few little places. But this really just pulls everything together, makes it look much more realistic and three-dimensional. Um, it's, it's just the most rewarding part of the painting for me personally. Okay, that's the final painting. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, give me a like, subscribe if you'd like to see more, and of course you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks again. Bye.